Welcome back to another review. This is Dragos and today we are going to look at Sebastian Maniscalco, Stay Hungry. Now, if you're not familiar with these reviews that I do, in these reviews, basically, I look at a couple of things. One of them being LPMs, which is last per minute. I look at number of act outs, number of voice modulations, as well number of characters created by the comedian in the special, right? And afterwards, what I'm going to do is I am going to compare Stay Hungry with some other specials by other comedians, specials that I've already reviewed in the past. And if you haven't seen any of these specials, please go to the playlist that has all of them. You can see uh, specials like Louis C.K. Sincerely, Bill Burr, Paper Tiger, you can also see Chris D'Elia, No Pain, and of course Tom Segura, Ball Hog, and Mark, Mark Marin, uh, and Times Fun. So be sure to check them out, and if you guys do like these type of videos, if you guys do enjoy the content, please like, comment, and subscribe. And why not suggest other specials for me to okay, look so at? If you are not familiar with Sebastian Maniscalco, then you should really look into him, because this guy is great, right? And especially 2019, when the special came out, was an amazing year for him. You know, he, this was his fourth special coming out. This was his fifth special coming out. He did four sold out shows at Madison Square Garden. He starred in The uh, Irishman, the movie on Netflix by Martin Scorsese. And just to put into context how big this guy is in the US, Madison Square Garden capacity is 20,000 people, over 20,000. And he sold that basically four times for this particular show, Stay Hungry. And also, he'll, he has a book out called Stay Hungry as well, which all kind of feeds into this massive kind of special that he put out. Now, I'm gonna give a couple of my thoughts on this particular special, so if you guys wanna skip that, there's a couple, two minutes of me just talking about what I thought about the special, I recommend you check it out. But if you don't want to do that, if you wanna go straight to the, to the numbers, you can do so by going to this minute over here, right? Now, I am actually quite a big fan of Sebastian Maniscalco. Uh, to be honest with you, I've only kind of discovered him about two years ago, and the reason why I've discovered him is because I follow The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, on Instagram. And The Rock basically pretty much put out uh, a clip on his actual feed of him watching Sebastian Maniscalco. This really famous bit from Sebastian Maniscalco of how, is, how it is like to receive guests in the current time or so was back in the day. Really funny bit, if you haven't seen it, you should check it out, it's over here. Uh, ever since then I kind of looked into him, and one of the things kind of captivates me about Sebastian Maniscalco, he manages to get a lot of laughs per minute just through physicality, right? He is one of the most physical comedians out in the game at the moment, and not only that, but he is also extremely, extremely, extremely clean, right? And one of the other reasons why I really like him is because he does kind of come across as a bit of a cultural comedian, which is kind of like what the area where I play in as well, right? All the merit and all the rewards from all those hard years of work, right? He is a very, very Italian kind of guy, and he can tell that he has worked on this particular style. He's worked a lot to get to the level of physicality and comedy that he has at the moment. He, he, I've watched some of his videos from back in the day, about 10 years ago, and the difference is much. He really has leaned into his particular style, which is just physicality. Even though he comes across as a very serious guy, the comedy comes across very comedic very physical, very clownish, but in a very sophisticated type of way, right? So I really appreciated that, uh, I really appreciate that about Sebastian. Uh, again, I've read his book, I've also checked out a couple of podcasts from him, and he, you can tell that difference between him being, you know, himself off stage and his persona on stage, very different. Now, this particular special, this particular special focuses a lot more on his family life, focuses a lot more on his interaction with his wife, you know, the, basically the birth of his daughter, and some of the topics that he covers in this particular special are as follows. All right, but I think that's enough uh, of me kind of fanboying over Sebastian Maniscalco. Uh, if you haven't watched the special, do watch it on Netflix. He has all the other stuff there as well. But let us, without further ado, get into the numbers. Okay, so in this particular uh, special, Sebastian covers 12 topics, and these 12 topics basically are airplane material, like there's a bit of airplane stuff, getting into an MMA fight, how he's not obviously kind of ready for that and not in the position to do that gym and spin classes with his wife, he talks about his wife's family, his own family, a couple of comparisons going back and forth with that. He talks about his wife hitting a car, and this is one of my favorite bits here, uh, going to the body shop, right? The Cirque du Soleil bit is absolutely hilarious. I'm not sure if I can show it in this video, but if not, you can search it. It's available on Netflix, you can check it out. Um, he, can, they talk, he also talks about having a daughter, about giving birth, the process, the maternity ward, and just overall being with the doctor there, right? Talks about you know having a baby, going wave riding with his wife, and he has a bit about the gas station minimart where he's trying to basically you know gas, get gas from a minimart at night. Crazy, all kinds of uh, situation, uh, and also talks about going to Home Depot. So that's kind of like uh, you know basically very kind of day-to-day -day stuff. 
I think, you know, he was called because he does cover some of these basic topics and day-to-day -day kind of, kind of um, day -to -day kind of issues. I think Seinfeld did say that Sebastian Maniscalco is one of his favorite comedians. Again, Seinfeld also works very clean, he works a lot of observations, and he's also a bit irritated by different behaviors by different people, right? So I would see why they would kind of click there. But, uh, all right, let's go uh, over to the numbers. All right, so we are at the numbers. Uh, all right, over here, effectively, you can see the Sebastian Maniscalco uh, numbers, right? So as you can see, throughout the whole show, he manages to get about 312 laughs, uh, which is which is not too bad, not too... Uh, not necessarily. I think he is in the upper tier, you know, the it's kind of the middle, right? You know, Jim Gaffigan's at the top with 523. Absolute fucking machine, Jim Gaffigan. Uh, and then, you know, you see Ali Wong, kind of like the lower tier, 264. Uh, but he's kind of like maybe mid, mid, lower mid compared to all the other people that we kind of looked at. Show duration 62 minutes. As you can see, in terms of topic, we've kind of discussed them 12 topics altogether, which comes to 5.16, you know, five minutes and, and basically 16 seconds per topic. Uh, let's look at the act outs. Man, this is what you want to look at with Sebastian Maniscalco. Look at this insane number of act outs, right? 160 act outs, 160 laughs are generated by act outs alone, which comes up to like 51% of his act is just act outs, right? So even with the other guys here, we have, you know, nobody kind of goes over 30. But this this guy, man, he fucking goes hard on the act outs. And it's so hilarious, right? Because the, the thing with the act outs is they are so universal right you don't need to understand the language you don't need to particularly kind of be very well aware of his culture of his background you just you know see the physical aspect of his comedy and expressions and you know how he moves and you can understand what's happening the only guy that i can think of that has a similar type of appeal has been perhaps uh gabriel iglesias who has very voice uh, oriented accent type of uh, uh comedy and in terms of voice modulation, he comes in at 92, about 29%. Voice modulation seems to be in relative order with all the other comedians. As you can see, everybody kind of hovers around the 31, 20 uh, range, except for Ali Wong. And in terms of characters created, he only creates 91 characters. When you look at Jim Gaffigan and Bill Burr, they kind of um, they exceed 100. But he stays within the 91 uh, type of area. So he is not overly reliant on characters for the humor and just jumping in and out. But he is, however, uh, extremely physical. That is Sebastian Maniscalco in a nutshell. He is very, very physical. Okay, so let's look at the graphs and see how that kind of compares. All right, so this is the overall heartbeat of the, the show in terms of laughs per minute. Uh, how they're kind of distributed, as you can see, very strong start, so at four, goes up all the way seven, and then it stays very comfortably above uh, three with a small dip to uh, two at minute 40, but very, very consistent, as you can see, between four to six, four to six, four to six, which is really kind of like what you would expect from a professional comedian, right? So, and because his abundance of physicality, basically, some of his act outs are actually quite long, which tend to generate like one or two uh, laughs from that perspective. Let's look at the very big points here. We have uh, minute 16, minute four, and minute uh, 16, two, six, seven. Okay, let's look at minute four and 16, right? Minute four, we have the joke about getting into a MMA fight. Minute 16, we have backpacking for Europe as part of the family uh, bit. Then 26, 27 was another big one. We have the body shop, of course. The body shop is hilarious, right? And then the last piece where there's a big spike in terms of laughs, we have minute 39, some of his funny bits, funniest bits. Basically his wife's postnatal situation when they're there and there's placenta everywhere, right? So if you haven't seen, that's pretty funny. All right, moving down, let us see how the distribution is. As you can see, look at this, very interesting. So he goes full on physical from the get-go. You know, he gets that large number of laughs from the get-go, see here? Basically, he, and the reason why he does this is to win the audience over. You know, the audience, you know, they, they have an, maybe some of them would have seen it for the first time. Maybe some of them would have never seen him live, right? In this situation, uh, you know, you want to basically get everybody, show them that you're funny. And this is, classic for every comedian, right? So he starts off very strong here, and then he kind of like keeps it relatively, relatively calm for the entire show, with obviously the exception of the body shop bit and so on and so forth. All right, let's look at the comparisons with all of them. So these are all the specials that I've done so far, all of them, right? As you can see here, you, you have, uh, oh, actually it's all of them except for uh, Jim Gaffigan, to be honest. All of them except for Jim Gaffigan. 
Now, these are all the specials that I've done. Uh, you can see Jim Gaffigan is here. Uh, he kind of is the one at the top with Louis C.K. Some of the heavy hitters, then you have you know, the, the, the Tom Segura, and here is where we have Sebastian on the yellow side, right? This is him. As you can see, very, very, uh, you know, with this regards to this graph, he's not super heavy on the laps per minute, but again, it's not, it's not just about the last per minutes, right? It's about the content. It's also about the um, the enjoyability of the overall act. I think it's very enjoyable, but particularly as you can see, there is a bit of a trend line with the people that have a bit more of a cultural slash message type of comedy. You can see Dave Chappelle, Ali Wong. They're all kind of here as well as, uh, where is the Marin? Marin as well as here, the green line. Marin actually does slightly better in terms of laughs per minute. Yeah, man, you really, Sebastian has really found his niche with this Italian kind of uh, heritage. There are a lot of people in that uh, unrepresented niche in the US and um, they are very supportive, right? They're very loyal. All right, let's kind of like uh, get some of the other comedians out of the, the picture and let us look at what we have here, kind of comparing them with the top tiers in terms of last friend. We have Louis C.K., Tom Segura, then we look at uh, Ali Wong here, just to have an accurate presentation with Dave Chappelle. Yeah, she, he seems to be more in the Chappelle Ali Wong bracket as opposed to the Tom Segura Louis C.K. one, right? Which is very interesting to kind of compare. All right, let's see what else we have here. We bring in a couple other people. See, we have Sam Morrill here with this large pump he has here. And then, you know, uh, Bert, Taylor Thomason, and yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. That is all with Sebastian Minus Calco. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I am a big fan of Sebastian Minus Calco, and I hope to get to some of his other videos in the future. Because his, um, his special, What's Wrong With People and Why Would You Do That? They're extremely funny as well. Had a great time watching them and actually uh, I'm pretty sure that the one that the, the particular video that The Rock tweeted that got him a bit of more exposure a couple years back was from uh, Why Would You Do That? But uh, thank you very much. If you guys did enjoy, please do subscribe, give me a like, subscribe and uh, suggest other specials to look at. Thank you once again and I will put the running graphs at the end as per usual. So thanks a lot and see you guys in the next one.